Hello and welcome to this Mithra Money Securities Investment 101 course. This is Lecture 17, The Riskless Yield Curve and Credit Spreads. In most countries, there is a special yield curve. And let's just draw a special yield curve here. Here it is. And it's often called the yield curve or the yield curve. And sometimes it's called the riskless yield curve. And it all depends which country you're in as to what they mean by the. In the United States, for instance, when they say the yield curve, they typically mean the US Treasury yield curve. In the UK, when they say the yield curve, they typically mean the UK government gilt or government bond yield curve. Now, we'll just go for a simpler definition. What we'll say is it's the yield curve, which is the lowest curve of any at all. So if we put some maturities on here, so we'll go for one year, say two, five, 10, 20 and 30 and that will be time in years. If we, along the side, we put some interest rates, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that will be yields in percentage. This red line here will be the lowest yield curve there is in the particular country. So there will be other yield curves for other bonds. And from all those bonds, the one that's lowest, there it is there, we're going to call the yield curve because it's going to be the foundation upon which we build everything else, including something called credit spreads. We just need to explain why that one's called the riskless yield curve. Let's say we go to the UK government. So the UK government will issue a series of bonds called gilts, and that will be in pounds. And the reason they're called gilt is in the good old days, they used to be backed by gold. It used to be four pounds was an ounce of gold. So you took your four pounds down to the Bank of England and they would give you an ounce of gold in return for that four pounds. So that was very, very nice. That's why they're called gilts. Now, it's said to be riskless because the UK government can print these days, in our Keynesian days, can print pounds out of thin air to buy these bonds or to buy anything. And that's called managing the money supply. They do that via their central bank, the Bank of England. If I do that where I live, then of course I go to jail for counterfeiting. So because they can print pounds out of thin air to buy things and to provide you with your £100 principal payment and your coupon payments through the life of the bond, it's said to be the riskless yield curve. Not entirely riskless, of course. The sun might not come up tomorrow. There is a risk of the sun not coming up tomorrow. It could blow up overnight. And the UK government has defaulted probably twice. People argue about it. Definitely once with the thing called Stop the Exchequer. Also, arguably, in 1932, when they defaulted on a war bond, and perhaps even technically in 1948 and 1967, perhaps too as well. So they have defaulted before. Most governments around the world have defaulted. So it's not entirely riskless, but it is the lowest yield curve. So just for the sake of argument, we will call this the riskless yield curve. We're going to go to a particular country, and this country is called Mithril Island. So here's Mithril Island here, somewhere in the Pacific, near Tracy Island, I believe. And this island doesn't have a government. It's entirely owned by one man. This one man here, here he is. He's called Seanus O'Ringus. And he owns the entire island privately himself. And he has a bank. And the bank he owns 100% of is called the Mithril Money Bank. And they issue bonds to do various financing operations. And their yield curve for their bonds is said to be the or the riskless yield curve. Now, we have a very special currency on Mithril Island. We have the Mithril Dollar. And the Mithril Dollar, 20 of those, is equal to one gold ounce of 0.99 fine gold. So we don't bother with any of this fiat currency stuff. Mithril Money Bank also has a 100% reserve of gold in its vaults, which is audited each year and is viewable by any member of the public. So we create this riskless yield curve, which is the lowest yield curve on Mithril Money Island. So what's a credit spread then? Well, I want you to imagine that there's another company on Mithril Money Island. So the Mithril Money Bank is based in the capital there. And the capital there is called Ring Central. So Ring Central is the capital city of Mithril Island. But what about this company here? This company here is the infamous Mithril Money Fish Source Company. And they issue corporate bonds which have a higher yield curve than the Mithril Money Bank. 
and that's their yield curve. You can see there that it's higher than the riskless or the yield curve. And what this means is that for any particular time frame, they need to pay a higher yield to get you to buy their bonds. Remember, they want the yields to be as low as possible and the market will determine what those yields should be. So we'll do three particular yield frames there, the one year, the five year and the 20 year. This is the riskless yield curve, which is produced by the Mithril Money Bank in Ring Central. And this is the riskier yield curve, which is produced by the Mithril Money Fish Source Company on the coast there. So the Mithril Money Bank has less risk than the Mithril Money Fish Source Company. Let's go to one year then. Let's figure out what these yields are at these particular points here. So at that point there, I reckon that that's about 1% for the Mithril Money Bank. And if we just take that across there like that, oh, let's just fudge that. Let's say that that's about 1.5% for the Mithril Money Fish Source Company. That means the Mithril Money Fish Source Company have to pay half a percent more to get you to buy their bonds rather than the riskless bonds. That is 50 basis points. 100 basis points equals 1%. If we do that in terms of percent, that's going to be 0.01%. If we have the equation where 100% equals 1, then that's also going to be 1 basis point is going to be equal to 0.0001, which is quite a small number. So 50 basis points then between the two different organisations. And that is the credit spread for a one-year issue. That the credit spread for a one year issue between Mithril Money Bank and Mithril Money Fish Source Company is 50 basis points. Now, as time goes on, the riskier organization just keeps getting riskier and riskier and riskier. It's a bit like a kind of snowball going down a hill. Once you start off with a little bit more risk than somebody else, after a period of time, you typically will have a lot more risk than the initial company. Again, just think of a snowball going down a hill. Up here on the five year bond, we've got a much bigger difference between the two. So we just need to delete this stuff here because it's in the way let's put some lines across here then so that i reckon is about 3.5 percent and what is it for the mithril money fish source company that's about 5.5 percent so now the spread has widened remember it was 50 basis points here or half a percent after five years, it's now grown to 200 basis points or 2%. Uh, let's go out then to 20 years, which is here. Let's take those lines across. And I'm just going to have to guess these, otherwise we're going to get into some kind of quite messy situations. I reckon that that's about there. So that's about 5.1%. And let's do the Mithril Money Fish Source Company. That's about there. Let's take that across. That gets to about there. I have to extend this yield frame here, and that's going to be about 8%. So what we have at the outer edge now is we have a spread, a credit spread of, quickly using my incredible brain, 2.9% or 290 basis points. So that's the riskless yield curve, which we can see in blue there. And we have various credit spreads between it and various other corporate organizations. We've got at one year, there's a 50 basis points credit spread between the Mithril Money Bank and the Mithril Money Fish Source Company. At five years, we've got a 200 basis point credit spread between the two organizations. And at 20 years, we've got a 2.9% spread between the two different organizations. Hopefully that's the conceptual matters covered. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about something that's related called the interbank offer rate. Look forward to that. I'll see you next time.